Once the glittering jewel in Britain's colonial crown, Hong Kong still dazzles after 12 years of Chinese rule. Asia's world city, as it brands itself, boasts 19 billionaires and more Louis Vuitton shops than London or Paris. High in its towers are some of the most glamorous apartments in the world. But there is another side to this city. Actually, in Hong Kong, we have two worlds in one city. I think it's, it's just, you just like you go to another world. It's not Hong Kong. <laughs> Zilai Shan is a local rights activist, and she's taking me on a tour of the Hong Kong that tourists don't see. Just wait a moment. She's worried because the tenants here are as camera shy as they are poor. Uh, you, you don't claim the, the, those people they are paying much, it's okay. okay. Yeah. Eventually, we're ushered in. What you're looking at are cages. Not for animals, but people. Old people, mostly. And this is their entire world, with room for only a few prized possessions. 79-year-old Dai Yuan Po has lived this way for 30 years. Does he consider this home? I don't know. Yes, yes. Home for 30 years? Yeah. Dai Yuan Po has no family to care for him. He's applied for public housing, but the likelihood is that he'll remain here, sharing with 10 other men in the only real home he's ever known. So from here, yeah. from just where my finger is, yeah, from yeah. here yeah. to yeah. here yeah. is six foot. And the, and the width of the bed it's just two and a half feet. To add insult to injury, the rent isn't even cheap for such tiny spaces. Dai Yuan Po is paying 12 Australian dollars a month per square foot. That's more than the rate per square foot for some luxury apartments here. Most of these men are on welfare. Rent eats up more than a third of that, leaving just $13 a day for everything else. Many of their uh, cage uh, uh, door, they, they, they cannot afford three meals a day because they need to save money to buy the toilet paper, even buy water sometimes because some of them, they don't have kitchen or do not have facility to, to afford water something like that. Hey. It's a sweltering night. Even at 8 p.m., the temperature remains above 30 degrees. The walls tell you the age of the building. In this case, 60 years, ancient by Hong Kong standards and approved as housing by the government. The United Nations says cage homes are unacceptable, calling them an insult to human dignity. So in 2009, this is the way that hundreds of people still live in Hong Kong. And those who are campaigning to eradicate these sorts of dwellings say they could be around for decades to come. Zilai Shan works for the Society for Community Organization. She spent 13 years helping Hong Kong's poor and downtrodden. And this notoriously rough Kowloon neighborhood is her beat. So they, they did this room, the mother and daughter. The area is home to thousands of urban slum dwellers. The bulk of the working poor. Others include the mentally ill and drug addicts. I think you cannot stand inside because you're too tall. As well as a mother and young child. Living not in a cage, but what the government euphemistically calls a cubicle home. A space not much bigger than a king size bed. Did you go to school? Yeah. Yes. Oh, you speak English. Huh? Eight-year-old Jessica Lamb is a bright, cheerful child, despite her surroundings. 
where the TV competes with the rice cooker for pride of place. Beyond the dwelling, suffocatingly small size, there's the fire threat posed by the maze of exposed electrical wires. Hygiene is another worry. The bathroom also serves as the kitchen. Just about everything has to be shared with the other cubicle dwellers on their floor. Twenty people use the same toilet. Mm -hmm. Twenty people. Twenty people use the toilet. Yeah, Mrs. Lam came here from mainland China, looking for an improved life for her family and a better school for her daughter. Her husband and son are still on the mainland, and she hasn't seen them for months. I asked Mrs. Lam how life in China compared with this. <laughs> what she misses most is her son. What the charity worries about most is Jessica's welfare. I think I need to help this girl uh, to have a to be rehoused uh, as soon as possible. We they, they cannot live in this grow up in this kind of uh, condition. The next day we return to Jessica's home. Her mother's just leaving for her afternoon job at a local 7-Eleven, where she earns less than $4 an hour. For the next six hours, Jessica will be alone. During school holidays, most afternoons are spent watching television. The corridor is her playground. But there's no one here to play with. Dwarfing Jessica's apartment block is a glittering new addition to the Hong Kong skyline. It's a shopping mall that's about as far removed from Jessica's world as it's possible to get, even if it's right next door. Uh, why is in Hong Kong such a rich society we still have K people live in cage home is because um, actually the, the poverty issue in Hong Kong is getting worse. Um, the gap between the rich and the poor is getting uh, uh, big. Hong Kong's per capita income is now higher than Switzerland's. But despite the city's wealth, social workers estimate that at least 100,000 people now live in cubicles, cages and partition dwellings. Many have been forced into such conditions by the current economic slowdown. But the government is doing little to help.
Good enough. You know the, the waiting list in uh, for the public housing is over hundred thousand, and I can't see that fifteen thousand units per year can solve the problem. Frederick Fung King Ki is one of 30 directly elected legislators to Hong Kong's 60 member mini parliament. He says the government should do what it did 20 years ago when it removed the last of the notorious squatter camps. And actually, we do solve it. You, 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 you see, there's no squatter areas in Hong Kong now. We, we should have that sort of, of, of uh, <clears throat> uh, mindset. But despite his good intentions, Frederick Fung doesn't have the power to change government policy. Zilai Shan says that with only half of the parliament directly elected, Hong Kong's rulers have little fear of public accountability. One of the problems is that our government, the chief executive or many of the lawmakers, legislative councillors, they are not elected by universal suffrage. So the poor, they have no right to vote. And so the privilege, the government don't need to listen to the voice of the poor. Jessica's getting ready for her first day back at school after the long summer holiday. Her mother's already left for work. Breakfast is a few digestive biscuits and a small bottle of milk. Unless she and her mother are given public housing, the choices facing them are bleak. Jessica's already spent a year of her childhood living in a cage. The length of Hong Kong's waiting list for public housing means she could still be in one when she's a teenager.